good to go? All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, and thanks for tuning in, especially if you're on the live stream watching this um, from down in the Hackett area or across the pond, as they were saying earlier. Uh, so I'm Christine from Scale Labs. I'm really excited to um, be at ETH Amsterdam I'm doing this workshop. The primary goal of the workshop is to, one, explain more in depth what Scale is all about, and also give you an update about V2 from a surprise guest. <laughs> and then also do some live coding uh, for those that kind of want to follow along using some tools that you, sh you should already be familiar with. And if you're not, don't worry. We'll slow it down and make sure that everyone can catch up. So um, before launching into that, just want to remind everyone about the prizes. We do have a lot of prizes to win today. Um, so if you are going for the grand prize, it's pretty much using uh, having the best use case of scale integrated within your application. That means potentially using some of our additional features, file storage, intertrain messaging, et cetera, et cetera. We'll definitely get into what that is all about um, later. We also have two other categories. If you're developing a metaverse, P2E, or NFT game, um, all teams that win this will share up to five thousand dollars and then for partner integrations if you see any partners walking around um, that you want to try to integrate onto scale you can definitely do that and you'll share up to two thousand dollars for teams that are hacking on that and then last but not least any team that hacks and deploys an application onto the scale network will split four thousand dollars among yourselves so really excited to see what gets built um, today and if you have your phones ready definitely go ahead and scan that QR code it will take you directly to the information you need to get started all right, so what is scale? So scale is a layer that sits on top of Ethereum that pretty much allows you to speed up your um, smart contracts and then also removes the, the gas costs. Now, what's great about this is it fits really well within the Ethereum ecosystem. So all the tools that you love um, that exist in Ethereum automatically works on the, scale, on the scale network as well. You don't have to pr program a new language. You don't have to change your tech stack. You can simply just migrate everything over to scale using an, an Infura-like endpoint, as you see here. And I'll get into how you can actually do that using some tools here. Um, Remix, we might go through Truffle if we have time, um, but definitely um, uh, explaining Web3 and EtherJS as well. All right, so how does this all work? We have nodes around the world, and what ends up happening is when you decide you want a scale chain, we group together a subset of those nodes. We take 16. And what this means is your scale chain has its own uh, environment. It allows you to process transactions, but it also has file storage, meaning that you can store files directly to the blockchain. So let's say you wanted to host your website or stream videos. You can upload that to the file system and have it just automatically um, displayed to you because we have an NGNX layer that sits on top of that. Uh, additionally, we have interchain messaging, which is a bridge that connects you between Ethereum and Scale. Um, so that means that all of your assets you've already developed on Ethereum, you can migrate them over to Scale. Or if you haven't yet started, you can start minting on Scale directly and migrate them later, thus by saving even more gas. One of the things that we do um, is we run to rotate the nodes ever so frequently. So this adds a layer of protection because I know what everyone's thinking out there, 60 nodes, that may not be a lot, but when you think about the random rotation, over time, you can potentially have 70%, 90%, 100% of the network might have worked for your scale chain at any point in time. And we do this to make sure that nodes can't collude. Um, if you want to learn more about that, definitely come see us at the booth. Um, our VP of product, Chadwick, would love to go in detail about that, as well as our BD team. I'm going to call out some few. Ryan, Connor, Fabio, who else is here? <laughs> Alex as well. Can definitely give you a rundown on um, all that's involved there. All right, but this is a fun thing. Um, we're a multi-chain network, and it's one of the first of its kind. So I know you've probably have been seeing the news and you've been seeing other networks trying to migrate to do the same thing. It's really cool to see that you know other applications are now seeing the value about this and now trying to integrate that within their applications as well. So definitely um, check to see how we're doing it here because one of the things that's really excited about this week is we are launching something called the Scaleverse, which is basically a V2 of the Scale network. And what that V2 allows you to do is add organization 
around the scale chains. So we listened to our community, and our community submitted proposals, which was amazing, that said that they wanted to band together to create hubs. So we have exchange hubs, which is all your liquidity. Um, we have some amazing exchanges, some amazing partners that are gonna be launching there over the next few weeks, as well as marketplace um, hubs as well. We have marketplaces that said, hey, we wanna join the scale network and provide an ecosystem to where um, any NFT project or any project that has an NFT can list their NFT on the scale network and have it transact in a free environment. How cool is that? <laughs> and then lastly, because you know a lot, some of the community, they don't necessarily want to manage their own scale chain. They want to use what's existing, kind of like how they leverage Ethereum. And so that's where community chains come into play. Instead of having to manage your own scale chain, if you just want to deploy your application, we have an environment for you to be able to do that and a hub-like environment as well. But then lastly, you know, there are a lot of applications out there that have said, we want our own chain. We want to make sure that our transactions per second isn't deprecated because of another game or another application running, and our speed stays the same. And the only way that that is viable is through a multi-chain architecture, which is the thing that we started with our vision from the beginning. And so really excited to see this come to life with Scale V2. But there's so much more to that, and I think Chadwick should probably come up and explain a little bit more. You ready to come up? <laughs> now, I don't have a slide for him, so you're going to have to listen carefully to all the additional features coming into Scale V2. Hey everyone, Chadwick here, VP of Product. Uh, so just to piggyback on Christine's intro, uh, the key thing with the hubs and with V2, we've taken the interchain messaging agent, which is the native bridge deployed on scale chains. Uh, and for several months, that's been operating very well between Ethereum and Scale, uh, transacting and transferring tokens and arbitrary messages between Ethereum and Scale. And now that we've, we've expanded that to uh, basically help promote and drive the Scaleverse, the sort of hub and uh, dApp chain communication model, by allowing any two Scale chains to transact uh, tokens or messages basically sending tokens and messages between any two scale chains with the same uh, bridge layer that we have using BLS signatures. But the key thing here is, OK, it's a bridge, but it's a bridge that can transfer tokens between any two scale chains in a gas, cost-free gas environment. So you don't pay any gas fees transferring tokens between any two scale chains. And the resolution time between any two scale chains is very fast. It's 18 seconds. Um, so we've taken that bridge from Ethereum to scale and applied this between any two scale chains. Um, on top of this, we didn't stop there. V2 includes this, but also includes what we call an RNG endpoint. It's very difficult for Solidity developers to find a really good uh, source of entropy to drive like the randomness of maybe NFT properties, lottery design, um, or other deeper functions that you'd want to do in smart contracts. There are other options out there, like VRFs um, and other options as well, but we decided on scale because of the uniqueness of our architecture and how we use BLS threshold signatures amongst the nodes that comprise your scale chain. We're able to leverage this in a very easy way to allow developers to basically call a pre-compiled contract on each scale chain that delivers a random number, gener a random number for every cr uh, block that's created. It's a really easy way. It doesn't, cr doesn't create any external calls that you have to do. It's basically a very simple uh, assembly code that you can uh, copy and paste in a contract and integrate very easily. We also have an Oracle API. We have the base layer available now. Um, we're finishing a few aspects of that, but it'll allow basically any developer to create an RPC call or an RPC uh, call to any uh, external off-chain data and then allow the scale chain, the nodes in the scale chain, to uh, request that data from, uh, from off-chain and bring that inside, come to an agreement about what that off-chain data is, and then present it uh, for available uh, verification and solidity. Um, and then, did I forget anything? I think that was it. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for V2. Yeah. So. Scale chain transfer, oracles, R-A-N-G, oh my. 
Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting, though. I, I think uh, we're really excited for the Scaleverse because it's really just showing the power of a multi-chain network. And I really want to stress that, multi-chain network. Started from the beginning, vision number one, and we're really excited to see it um, you know, evolve into what it is today. Um, with that Oracle piece, though, I think we're really excited because um, we do um, partner with other Oracles. Um, but I think you know, giving developers the option to have an Oracle that's native to the chain, I think, is also unique. Because when you think about what the Scale um, Network is trying to do, it's not just creating another blockchain. It's creating a blockchain with um, a platform of features. So file storage, the Oracle, RNG, the list just goes on. Machine learning, which was something that we sunsetted, but we had before. Like, it's really exciting to see Scale Lab Labs Labs, scale L2, <laughs> develop amazing things over and over and over again. All right. So now I think it's really cool to take a step back and see what cool things can you build on scale. And with fast finality, no gas fees, and high throughput, it feels like the possibilities are endless. And we didn't build a blockchain that was just for NFTs. We didn't build a blockchain that was just for games. We built a blockchain for every application out there. And that takes time to build. <laughs> so where we are today means that now the applications can take what the features that are there and build these really cool applications. So with Fast Finality, we were able to deploy oracles. But other oracles could also create on this modular system as well. Media paywall, authentications. The no gas fees mean that NFT projects can launch their application without having to raise a lot of capital first. They can simply launch their application, prove product market fit, and then move forward from there. And that's a game changer when you think about how things currently operate in Ethereum ecosystem. Being able to just launch your application or your DAO without having to figure out how to pay the high gas fees. And then high throughput. One of the things that we did at one of the ETH conferences um, a couple of years ago was we took Unity, <laughs> we took one of their templates, we put it on scale, and saw how it worked. And it worked extremely well, extremely fast. And one of the feedbacks that we always get from game developers is, is that when they use a scale network, they can de develop for their application and not for the blockchain. And that's a different way of thinking about approaching development. So really cool to see all these different applications that you can develop. Now, what are some applications that have developed on us? Well, Ruby Exchange is a really great partner of ours. It's going to be launching one of the first exchanges within Scale Network. And what's cool is that Liquidity Hub that I talked about, the organization, they're going to be at the forefront of that, making sure that you can bring liquidity in and out very seamlessly. Uh, they're really good with uh, marketing, as you can see. That's one of their videos. Very flashy, very amazing. Um, but what I'll do, though, is actually show you their application. and. Let me come here. So this is the Ruby application. And it's just on, on the test network for now, because they're going to be launching in the next few weeks. But what's really cool is that they're allowing um, developers to easily bridge over um, current um, you know, standardized tokens, USDC, USDT, the list goes on. And if you want to add your custom token, they are a great partner to make sure that you can do that within the scale network. They've also integrated with our faucet to distribute S-Fuel. And I know I haven't talked about that, but I promise I'll bring you up to speed on that in just a bit. Um, but this faucet makes sure that anyone that doesn't have permission to process transactions on the scale chain can do so. And I think that was a really cool way of how they integrated that within their application. What are some other applications that have developed? IV Cash. This is a really great NFT project. You don't have to have a wallet or understand blockchain to be able to get an NFT. And they prove that by allowing anyone to create a, um, a QR code, present it on a screen, add a game, or anywhere, scan that QR code, and simply have an NFT show up in your wallet that's created for you. And so that's a different model than saying, hey, how about you download an application here, understand blockchain, make sure you save your private key, and then, oh, make sure you didn't change to the correct endpoint. They remove all of the friction for their end users. And so when you think about um, creating an application with design in mind, using an application such as Layer 2 that the scale allows you to do that and achieve that because, again, we have a no-gas environment. The last one I'll talk about is going to be Clet Name Services. What's cool about them is that they built an application that allows you to uh, reserve your name. So it could be christine.eth, it could be my daughter's a it could be chadwick.eth. 
But essentially, when you reserve that, um, it then actually resolves to the wallet address. And they have a really great API as well. So they have two sides of their product. One side is for um, you know, users to actually get their names, reserve them, and be able to attach it to their wallets. The other side is for DAP developers to integrate that within their applications. So they have a fully fledged, um, built out API that allows you to do that. But not just to um, you know, integrate their name service, but ENS and Unstoppable Domains as well. As well. They're covering the entire suite of domain name servicing, which I think is a really awesome way of using um, Scale as well. So when you're buying your um, names on their application, within the scale system, it all happens in the background. The user doesn't have to know that, you're on, that they're on scale. They're just simply there. They're buying their name with a credit card, and that is it. So again, another great use case for usability. All right. We're finally at the live demo portion. I hope I didn't kill you by slides. Looks like I didn't. Everyone's still up. Everyone's still looking this way. That is great. <laughs> um, do I have developers in the room? Or are we here to watch? I know I have developers out there that's watching on the live stream, but I can't talk to you, so. Developer, okay, one, two, three-ish, three, okay. Three, three in the room, that's good. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll um, kind of go through a little bit of the coding aspect of scale. Um, because I think it's really cool to see how seamless and how easy it is to get up and running. All right, so I'm gonna switch back here to my lovely browser. We're gonna exit out of this. Goodbye, Ruby, we still love you. All right, so the documentation portal, and I'm gonna back up just a bit because there's a lot of information on here. Uh, you can thank, again, Chadwick, our VP of product, for organizing all of this and making sure that everything's ready for the Scale V2 launch. But if I navigate here to develop, there's a plethora of information on how to use, again, those existing tools that I promised you guys, um, or just deploying to the Scale network if you already know what to do, you just wanna go it alone. Um, but let's use something that most developers are familiar with, Remix. A lot of developers have used this, you've come across this in some capacity for just simply deploying a smart contract. Well, what you'll see here is that all of these tools have step-by-step -step instructions on how they use that with the scale network. And one of the things that reigns true with most of these is that the deployment or um, the usage of these is just as simple as changing an endpoint. So if I go to this MetaMask example here, there you go, just changing an endpoint. Portis, same thing, simply just changing an endpoint. And I think because of the way the Ethereum space has evolved, all tools that are building within that space makes it so that way you can integrate with other layers outside of Ethereum, and it's shown here. Now for Remix, it's more or less the same. Um, you can take this example smart contract, copy it into Remix, and just run it by deploying on the scale network. So let me show you what that looks like. If I click on this link, actually let's back up. I'm gonna open it into a new browser tab. All right, perfect. We have a simple smart contract called Hello Scale. Um, super simple, but um, one of the things that um, you'll know is that you could always connect it to MetaMask by switching it to Injected Web3. And here we're on MetaMask, I'll switch it back to the Ethereum network. But um, because we're at the hackathon, if you go to, oops, let's not open that. <laughs> if you go to ethamsterdam.scale.network, this will give you all the information that you need for getting a scale chain endpoint and accessing a faucet while you're at this endpoint, uh, as while you're at this conference to be able to get it going. So if I click here, there are two scale chains available. And I'm gonna select the first one. Now, I can go the manual way of copying this, opening MetaMask, and adding it to um, you know, my list of networks, or I can do it the automatic way, which is click on this button here, and it'll automatically add it for me. Now, I'll go ahead and switch networks. And what I wanna do is jump back just for a second to the documentation, because if you wanna understand exactly how we created that button, all of the code for doing that is simply here. You can copy, paste, and just have it work. So I'm gonna go back here to Remix. And now that I'm on the scale chain, as you can see, I don't have any um, SKETH, which has been rebranded to SFuel, actually. And SFuel essentially is a token that exists on a blockchain just to prevent DDoS attacks. It has no monetary value, which means you can use it as an authentication um, mechanism. So if I come back here, and I'm gonna go back, I'm um, gonna back up a little bit, and what I'll do is, let's see. 
I'm going to copy this endpoint, paste it here, and then I'll come here and get my wallet. Okay, super simple. Paste that here. And then simply click on Get S Fuel. What this basically shows you is just a faucet um, mechanism for setting up distributing that S Fuel. You can just as easily um, distribute S Fuel the moment you recognize this user when they log into MetaMask. But now that I have S Fuel, I can go back to Remix and simply deploy the smart contract onto um, the scale chain. All right, just want to make sure everything's connected. As long as this green light is going, we're good to go. And let's go ahead and click deploy. One of the things you'll notice is just how inexpensive it may seem to deploy the smart contract, and that's by design. Because again, it's a gas-free environment. <laughs> but we still want to make sure that no one can DDoS you. And so over time, if someone is trying to DDoS you, this um, number will simply increase by um, a predetermined number until they run out of S fuel. And you can decide just not to top them up, which means they're blocked from running transactions on your blockchain. Now, if I confirm this, that'll do what you expect will happen in any other blockchain. It deploys a smart contract to scale. And from there, I'm able to transact with it just like I would if this were running on Ethereum. And so just as I promised, very simple to transfer over from Ethereum to scale. Now, one of the other things that we can do is let's check out one of those really cool features that Chadwick mentioned. Um, I like the idea of checking out the um, RNG endpoint. One, because um, I think the documentation is really well done, where you can simply copy, paste, run. Now, I'll copy this, and I'll come over here, and I'll paste this here. Let's go ahead and save that. Good. Looks like it's already compiled. And I'll delete that one, and we will simply redeploy. All right, give that a moment. And this is that random number generator that Chadwick had mentioned. What's cool is that in scale v2, this is going to come standard on every blockchain. And so one of the things that we kept getting asked about is that, you know, with scale being a costless environment, do you guys have a random number generator? And if so, can we use it? Do you have code snippets? Well, we took it a step further. We don't just provide you the code snippet. We provide it um, you know, standardized with every blockchain, so you can just simply access it. And so every time I click on Get Random, every time there's a new block, a new random number is presented to you. Um, so a really cool way of using one of the new tools that's coming out um, in Scale v2. All right, so before continuing on, um, I will pause if anyone has any questions. Straightforward so far? Everyone's following? I see nods, I see nods. OK, no one's sleep yet. This is great. I know it's midnight. All right. All right. So again, I think the main thing I want to drive home here is just um, you know the simplicity of using the scale network, um, but also the complexity of the features that we have available. <laughs> and one of those complexities, I think, is drawn out in interchain messaging. So if you're here building a token and you want to make sure that it can um, transverse between different chains or different blockchains, re between Ethereum and Scale, um, or reverse from Scale to Ethereum, this is um, the, the documentation that you want to land on. Um, now, there's a lot here. We have um, support for all of the major token standards, ERC-20, ERC-721, ERC-1155, and then any custom smart contract. Now, that is very unique because a lot of the bridges out there only support ERC-20. But with the support for all of these, what that means is that you can really transfer any asset to scale, even as far back as CryptoKitties, <laughs> or um, create any new standard and simply have it work within the scale network with being able to transfer that back and forth. Now, we have some really cool um, diagrams here. Um, that help you just sort of like understand what the flow looks like. So you're not going on this, on this alone. We're, I'm a visual person. I hope so you are too. And so having a, a clear way of understanding how to move a token between the different chains is extremely helpful. 
And that Minting First um, methodology that I mentioned um, is down here, where we give you a simple flow of understanding how to first mint um, an NFT or any asset on the Scale Network, and then move it to Ethereum after the fact, thus by saving you even more gas. So I encourage any blockchain project that's looking to hack at this hackathon to try it out, because um, this would be a really cool way of integrating it within your NFT project, your P2E game, or your metaverse application. All right. Let's go back here. All right, one last thing. Um, since we have everyone's attention, we do have $100 million in USD for an uh, ecosystem grant for program, and that's going to be specifically for gaming. So if you're here building a game, definitely come talk to us. That way we can see um, where you are in your development and to see if we can get you um, into this grant program. But it looks like we had a question before I concluded. Yeah, where, where would you um, use the scale chain to scale chain? bridge? How would you use it? Mm. The scale chain to scale chain bridge. I'm actually going to go back to here because I think, uh, let me show this one. All right. Uh, great question, by the way. And the question was, for those that are um, viewing this, how would you use the scale chain to scale chain bridge? Uh, the best way to think about that is, let's first explain um, you know, the layout here. We have these exchange hubs which are providing liquidity, meaning all liquidity is coming into that one chain and other chains that are creating um, complementary like uh, exchange hubs as well. We have NFT marketplaces, which means that all NFTs are gonna be viewable within one endpoint, one chain, um, which is great for developers because things are able to be shown in collections, which is very important if you are building an NFT project. And those community chains where we have a lot of applications that wanna share space because they don't necessarily need need 70 gigabytes <laughs> for storage or um, 200 transactions per second for their medium chain. They just want a small subset of that. Um, but if you're going to be launching um, on your own chain or one of these hubs, how do you communicate between chains and when does it make sense to do so? Well, as you can imagine, if you are launching your P2E game or your metaverse game or your music application, you are um, in your own ecosystem, your own container, which means that you might need to bring liquidity over. Now, you can go this on your own and use Interchain Messaging Bridge to bring it from Ethereum, or you can take advantage of the free transactions per second and scale and simply go over to the Ruby Exchange that exists on the Exchange Hub. And when you do that, you would use the Scale Chain to Scale Chain Bridge to be able to make that connection between your chain and that Exchange Hub. It's going to be extremely fast. Everything processes in 18 seconds or less, but what that means is that you're able to bring over the pairs that you need for your game, for your NFT, for anything that you're building, whether it's a stable coin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's scale. <laughs> it could be any token that you want to use or any custom token that you want to use. So the normal flow is going to be bringing the liquidity that already exists in the scale ecosystem over to your chain, but there are some edge cases there. And one of those edge cases is if you're creating your own custom token on your own chain and you want that listed on the exchange, you have the same flexibility to use that same scale chain to scale chain transfer to push your token to the exchange that way it's listed for anyone else in the ecosystem to pull down later. So a really cool way of um, you know, spider webbing this together in a really organized way. And um, yeah, the scale chain to scale chain um, upgrade that's happening this week, actually, uh, you'll be able to start um, playing around with that relatively soon. And can I store like in that file storage? Can I store my files in another chain and use one uh, for block uh, data? Okay, so the next question is, um, for file storage, can I store my file storage, um, my files, my files in another chain and use another blockchain for the data of the application. Is that correct? Um, the answer to that is yes. I think one of the things that um, you know the community realized immediately when Scale said that we were going to launch this multi-chain architecture is, oh, I can have five chains for my application and then use them for different modules within my application. And that was a really cool way of thinking about it. Um, and so, yes, if you wanted to use one chain for launching your token or running your game or running your application, you can do that. But let's say that you wanted to store all of the files that were going to um, be accessed for being used within the game or used on your website or used for machine learning or used for any application, you'd be able to have another chain that runs side by side to that. And so what's really great is that it means that you can scale horizontally. 
you're able to start with one chain, and as you need more space, you can either upgrade from you know, a medium chain to a large chain because we offer different types, or you can say, hey, you know what? I simply just want a new chain altogether, so that way I can double my storage all at once and maintain the same transactions per second because I might not need more. 200 is enough. <laughs> Especially when you think that 200 for one application versus 200 for 500 applications, as you might see in some other networks, that's a different conversation. When you are um, on a dedicated chain and you have all of your services just for you, um, you can think about you know, using those services and not worrying about um, the fluctuations that anyone else might cause. So, yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? The, the IMA bridge, are all the chains sharing one IMA bridge over to the mainnet, or are they, do they have their own? Yeah, so with the IMA bridge, um, because each scale chain um, is its own environment, they all have their um, own like uh, smart contracts there, right? And so they connect to the smart contracts um, between Ethereum and Scale, but yes, like the buckets that um, you would um, transact with on the Scale chain side are all going to be your own. On the Ethereum side, it is going to um, be a shared environment, but that is um, really well um, separated, if you will, based off of the chain that you're interacting with. And so as you can imagine, that design was put into place to make it easier for scale chain to scale chain transfer. <laughs> and um, also Ethereum to um, scale transfer. But um, yes, essentially on the scale chain, um, you have your own bucket, your own um, smart contracts. And what's great is that you don't have to think about deploying these. Everything comes pre-deployed, pre-compiled. And so as you can imagine, what that means is an easier way to understand how to connect this on each and every scale chain. If the contract address is going to always be the same on all the scale chains, you don't have to think about keeping a mapping of that, which I, I think is a great way of uh, approaching creating the entertainment messaging protocol. So good job, engineering team, who's not here, but here in spirit, and we're really excited. So any other questions? All right. Well, with that, I'm going to conclude the session. But if you have any questions, definitely come see us at the booth. Uh, we'll be around um, tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow, there's a special event. I can't tell you what the special event is, but come see Ryan. He will definitely explain that to you. It's going to be great. Um, but definitely come hang out with us and learn more about how to deploy your application onto scale. And before I go, I will just show this last screen here. For those, again, um, watching this virtually, definitely go ahead and scan that QR code or simply just put this um, URL in your browser. Again, we have 16,000 in prizes to be won, so definitely hack with us. Because at the very least, if you simply deploy, you have um, the possibility of winning that 4K prize that will be distributed among all teams. So at least give it a try. All right, thank you. <laughs>